subscribe and click the notifications button. Hi guys, Kim here with Art Classes for Kids. I hope you're enjoying Art Camp in a Box. We're already at the eighth project of the beginner box. And what we'll be making today will be inspired by the abstract artist Pablo Picasso and the cubism style he has and the subject that he did a lot of paintings of, which are musical instruments. We're gonna be doing this through the technique of printmaking, which I'm gonna tell you a lot more about. But you're gonna make something a little bit like this to make your prints, and then you're gonna make a few multiple prints from this little printing plate that you create. So let's make sure that you have all the supplies you need. You're gonna need your bag that says B8. So grab your bag that says B8. And I'll tell you what's inside. First of all, you have the instructions, and you might not need that right now. Maybe you did a sneak peek, because I'm gonna be giving you all the instructions on this video. And by the way, this is one of our pre-taped videos, and if it's your first time joining, the beauty of the pre-taped video is that you can pause it at any time. If I'm going a little fast and you wanna go a little slower, go ahead and pause it, and then press play again when you're ready to continue. You also get three sheets of sticky foam. It's uh, like a foam that you can cut easily with the back is sticky. And then you get a little print out of a guitar and a violin that you can use as a stencil if you want. You get five sheets of colored paper. You're going to have one extra because I want you to print five prints and then you pick your best four to mount. To mount them, we have these backing boards. So you would be getting four of these backing boards. With those, you're gonna need four labels to write your name and the date you made the project. And the last thing in the bag is the paper plate and the paper towel. Now you're gonna need a few other things besides those things, and those will be in the welcome bag. You're going to need cellophane. You're going to need four sheets of the smaller pieces that are in your roll. You're gonna need the cellophane tape to stick it to the backing. And you're going to need a pencil, a glue stick, your little set of paint brushes, and the acrylic paint. The only thing you're going to need that isn't in this entire kit is a pair of scissors. So pick the kind of scissors you have at home that you like to cut with, grab those, those are the only thing you're gonna need from home. And then we're gonna get started. Now that you've got all your supplies, let's put some things aside that we aren't using quite yet. Definitely put your painting supplies to the side. That's your paints, your brushes, your paper plate and your paper towel. Set that aside. Set your cellophane and your tape off to the side as well. And the first thing I'm gonna have you do is write your name on all four of your labels. So go ahead and do that right now. And don't forget to write the date. You want to know that date because later you're going to look back at this art and you'll be able to tell how old you were when you did it or where you were. You'll know it was in the summer of 2020. Once you have those all completed, then you're going to take each one of your backings and you're going to put some glue on the label and you're going to stick it on to the back just like this you repeat that three more times some people just like to rub the glue onto the board or you can rub it onto the paper one two three Alrighty, now I've got my four boards ready and I've got 
my four pieces of paper that I'm going, or five pieces of paper that I'm going to print on, set those aside. And now what we're going to do is make our uh, plate. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a musical instrument in it. You could add like these two. You could add a violin or a guitar. Or you can make up your own instrument. Like if you play a musical instrument, a clarinet, a flute, a, uh, uh, what is it, a saxophone. Maybe you play the drums. You can draw that out or you can keep it simple with the guitar. So I'm going to keep it simple with the guitar or the violin. I'm going to leave these two printouts up here like that. And all I'm going to do is cut out around these shapes. You don't have to be detailed around these. You can probably draw all of those little shapes on the top of the neck. Things that we tune our guitar with. So I've got one guitar cut out. I could cut that little hole out if I wanted to, or I could just draw that little hole. I'll cut this one. Okay, so I've got one stencil cut. Now I'm going for the other one. Now remember, if I'm moving too fast for you, go ahead and pause. But I'm moving fast for the people that like to go fast. Cutting around the top. So these are simplified drawings of a real, like abstract uh, violin. There's, I didn't draw all the strings on these because that's not necessary in this project. So I've got these two shapes. Now I've got these folks. I'm gonna create these shapes, but you see how Picasso would split the guitar into several pieces or here you've got two of them overlapping. I mean, this was actually the violin who split in a bunch of pieces. Here, the guitars are overlapping. So I'll show you what we can do. What we can do is take our guitar. If we want to split this one, we can put it half on one side like this. Draw half of it. And maybe I'm going to cut that out. Then maybe I'm going to have this, the whole piece fitting inside of here. So I've got, I've got this and this. Maybe I'm going to make a half of a violin or a part of a violin here. So I've got those shapes. Mm, maybe I'll make one more over here, but it's a shorter one. I could do that, I could make the neck a separate piece. You see? So now I'm going to start cutting. I'm going to save this for some other things. So I'm going to cut this out. And I'm keeping all my scraps because the scraps are going to become my geometric shapes that are used to make it look like it has more of a cubism style. So if you're wondering what cubism is, cubism is a style that Picasso was known for. He wasn't the only artist to do this over 100 years ago. There were other ones. And the other artists, you know, they all liked the style of uh, kind of simplifying something real they saw into more geometric shapes. So I've got this guitar, I've got an extra guitar neck. And now I'm just cutting out my pieces. There's my extra piece pile right over here. Now I'm gonna cut out this guitar. Oh, this one's a violin. Alright. And now one more. 
Now in printing, you're going to create what we call a plate. A plate is going to be the one piece that the other prints are made from. So we're going to make one of these cardboard backings. We're going to make one of these be our plate. We're going to flip it over and we're going to build this design, this foam design on top of one of these backings. So watch how I do this. I'm going to, hopefully you can see this well in my overhead camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one of these, I think I'll put this one right in the middle. So I'm going to peel and stick it and put it right here. Then I think I'll add this one on top of it. Okay, I'm going to add this one right here. So now you see I've got two pieces overlapping and I'm going to keep adding things. So maybe I've got this guitar, maybe I'm gonna put this guitar off to the side, like it's cut off. Oh, I'm gonna cut that hole, I forgot about the little hole. So now I've got this piece for here. Okay, I've still got this. This is gonna go somewhere. And maybe I need some of these shapes to lift everything else up. So I'm going to take this shape and cut it kind of weird. And I'm going to put it in this corner and I want this to be on top of it. So watch what I do. I'm going to peel this backing off. Then I'm going to lift this one back up if I can. Ooh, maybe. And then I'm going to stick it onto the corner and put this one on top. Now, if this doesn't want to stick anymore, oh, it did. Okay. Now, I'm going to add more things. So maybe I want something going across. Maybe I'll have this going across or this going across. Let's play around with it, right? Got this going across. Then I need some more shapes. Oh, I kind of like these shapes, this scrap. So I'm just gonna pull this scrap. Maybe I'll put it on top of this stuff. So you're just making it up as you go. Maybe I'll have this right in here. That's starting to look kind of cool. So far it looks like this. Okay, I've got this little circle. I cut it out over there, but now I'm going to add it to right there. And I've got, I've got more shapes. Let's see, what can I do? Now I can just cut up whatever I want and put shapes anywhere. So I think I'll put this shape right here. Maybe I'll put this in a corner. Maybe this will be on top of this. This, this could go up here. So you're just, you're making all these decisions. You're making it your own. You're creating this cubist composition. Oh, that's looking pretty good. But I think I want another part of a guitar. Maybe this one going off the top. Let's see how that's gonna turn out. So this one goes up here. Yeah, it's starting to look pretty cubist. Okay, I think I'll add some more shapes. I think I'll just add some more straight type shapes. Like this. Maybe this will be right here. I'm going to try to cover most of it with foams. Maybe I've got this little triangle and it's over here. Okay, I think I'll add a few more shapes. Looking good. Okay, what else can I add? I think I'll add another circle to the center of the guitar or the violin. No, that's a no, that's a violin. What should I have? I know. I'll have this shape right here. 
and maybe I'll have these little curly Q swirls. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to draw those. So I'm going to draw a swirl. It's like an S. Okay, I'm gonna draw one and then I'm gonna trace it and make it an opposite one on the other side. But first, I'll make one. Okay, I've got one. Now, if I want to make it the opposite, I've got to flip it. And now, I'm going to draw this, trace around it. Okay, let's get this other side. Okay, I've got my two little swirls. I'm going to add those on to the violin. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I kind of had them backwards, but they'll still work. Okay. So we've got that. Maybe I'll make a skinny little line that holds the strings up over here. Maybe I'm even going to make some skinny, skinny lines for my guitar strings, or at least one or two. Okay, I'm going to put one of these here, but I'll put two. I'll put one here and cut it. Whoops. And one here and cut it. I'll save it. Now I think I've got plenty going on. So I've got my geometric abstract. But you can see hidden guitars and violins in it, just like Picasso did. So now we get to do the fun part, the painting. And we have one whole, um, and we have one whole foam left. So I think we're only going to need two foams. Let's see. Okay, I'm clearing my space. Next, we're going to have our papers ready, right here. We're going to get our paper towels and we're going to get our paints out. So we're gonna pull all these paints out. And I'm going to use the second biggest brush. Now, what colors do I want? I don't know. I, I kinda like these metallic colors. I'm gonna try the metallic colors. See if I can get, I haven't used any of these, so I better open these all up. The first time you open these, you might need some parents help because they put them on so tight first time. Okay, so we've got all these to open up. And I'm getting this brush. Now I'm gonna start painting, but I have to paint fast because I don't want the paint to dry too quick. So I'm starting with my lightest color, this white, and I'm putting this on, and I'm painting it like I'm making a painting, it's just that I'm painting on top of foam. Okay, I think I'm going to only make a few of these things, this pearlescent white. Now I'm going to get another color, silver. I think I'll make this guitar silver. and this red behind it and inside it. And I'm going to get some green for my violin. Okay, and some blue for this guitar. How about some blue for that guitar too? Okay, some more red. I'm gonna do some shapes red. Maybe that will be red. And this can be red. Okay, the yellow. Make that yellowy red. Look kind of turn kind of orangey. 
So now I've gotten all these shapes. I can paint the shapes in between if I want, but they don't print out as, as easy. Okay, I painted super fast because I need it to stay wet. I just wipe out my brush and then I take, oh, let's see, let's take, what color should we take? I've got blue, I've got orange, I've got red, I've got yellow. Let's start with the lightest color, yellow. Now you're gonna line it up just like this and you're gonna rub it down. You can even turn it over and press it down. Now we're making our first print. Prints are multiples of the same image, but sometimes they're different because we're gonna probably use different colors every time. So now I pick it up and I peel it away and that's my first print. You see? Now we're gonna set this aside and let it dry while we do another one. The next one, oh my gosh, the next one, maybe I'm just going to do it all blues and greens. So I'm having a new color scheme. I'm doing everything blues and greens. So I'm painting fast. Remember, you gotta paint fast, otherwise your paint will be dry and it won't stick to the paper. So I'm going with, ooh. Mostly you're painting on the foam pieces, but if you wanna paint on the background, you can. It's just that it, it doesn't wanna print as good as the foam pieces. Okay, so I've got blue. Green, okay, I'm gonna do three colors. I'm doing blue, green, and yellow. Some of them I'm gonna fade two different colors. Now here comes the yellow, yellow, yellow. Okay, I think pretty much every spot is wet. I'll do some background. Strings, that. Okay, I'm gonna do silver for these things. All my things that are sticking up the most, I'm gonna give them a little silver. Okay, I think I'm ready. Okay, now I'm picking a new color. I'm gonna pick, choose purple. So I line it up, I rub it down, I push it a lot. You can even take your glue stick if you want to roll it. Woo! That's another way. Or you can just rub that. Let's make sure the lid doesn't come off. So you can do that and just use that to rub it. Then I peel it. Oh my gosh, that one turned out so cool. I love that one. I'm setting that one aside. Okay, I've got three more to make. Hmm, what are they gonna be? Okay, this one is going to have a lot of red and yellow. I'm gonna mix it up. Okay, I'm gonna start with yellow. I'm painting fast. Okay, and I'm going to do some silvers. I've got a lot of silver paint, so let's see where we can do silver. Okay, red, a little more red over here. Okay, let's see how this one turns out. Hopefully I've painted everything. The more layers you do, sometimes you got so much paint on here it's hard to tell. So I think I'll go with blue this time. So I'm going to set it down, I'm gonna rub it down, and I kinda like this rolling pin technique, or, or rubbing it with this. Okay, let's give this one a look. Wow, so now I've got three prints already. I've got two more to go, and then I'm gonna pick my favorites out of all those. Okay, I'm gonna try some new colors. This time I'm gonna use some black, some dark colors. I'm gonna use black and red 
And let's see what else. Oh, I already have a one that's open. Okay, this one I think I'll do black and blue. Okay, so I'm going to, black, blue, and silver. So silver, I still have silver on my brush. Whoops. Okay, now I'm going to do blue. I'm saving the black for last. So I'm doing blue. Okay, and I'm doing silver. I do this guitar silver. And I'm going to do Ooh, this guitar neck here. Okay, I need some more silver. I'm wiping out my brush. Remember, you don't have to have tons of paint on it. Smooth it out. Okay, now I'm doing black. Okay, I'm going to do these designs black. Ooh, I don't want that all in there. So what I'm going to do is take one of my other brushes and try to wipe that paint out if I can. I should be using a smaller brush for these small areas. Okay, I'm gonna take my smaller brush to do the blacks. And I'll do these strings. I'll do that swirly thing around here. So you can even paint on it. You can paint around things if you want. You can go around that. Maybe put those little things. Okay. Okay, I think I've got this one looking much different than the others. So now we're gonna take, oh, what do I have left? I've got red paper. I'm gonna go for red paper. So I just lay it right on there, move that paintbrush, and I'm going to rub it down. Okay, and I'm gonna smear it in. Now, yeah, let's see how this one looks. Oh, this one's really different. I like that, I like the black. Okay, I'm gonna put black in my last one. Then I'm gonna choose from all these. Okay, they're all good, I just don't know which one I like the best. Okay, this one, I'm going to do red and black. Red and orange and black. Okay, so red. Keep wiping out in the paintbrush. Okay, so let's do some orange. There we go, got the orange. Okay, orange, I'm gonna do an orange guitar. And I'm gonna do this orange, and this orange, and this guitar in here orange. Okay, then I'm going to do red. And wipe out my brush. It's getting kind of dirty. Okay, how about more orange? This one orange over here. And now the black. Okay, I'm going to have some big spots black this time. Because this is my last one, I'm blackening it up. Okay, so we've got that, we've got this. We've got a little bit of black background here. And this can be black. And this for sure, I'm going back to my small brush. Okay, and I'm doing some details. Okay, I'm gonna 
outline that guitar, I'm gonna outline that guitar, that shape. Now I'm just adding black all over the place. Okay, let's see how this one comes out. This is my last piece, orange. Okay, I think I've got that one pretty good. Let's make sure I rubbed in all the things. Okay, now we're gonna peel it off. Oh, that one's pretty cool too. I don't know which one I like the best. So we're saving our plate because this one's so cool, I'm going to wrap that up. I'm going to first move, move all my paint by clicking all the lids shut so they don't spill anywhere. Okay, so I'm moving those out of the way. Then I'm moving my paintbrushes. Make sure that you wash these out right after the video is done so they don't get hard as a rock. Okay, I'm moving all this. And now, We've got these. Oh my goodness, it's moving the instructions. So we've got the plate, the one we built, and then we've got all these to choose from. So I gotta pick out my favorite three. If I wanna keep my plate, this one is already mounted. Now I pick three out of these five for these three boards. So which are my favorite? Well, I definitely love the last one I made. So there's that. Ooh, out of these, which one do I like the most? I gotta take a look. I'm gonna say the purple I like, and the yellow. Wait, maybe the red, I don't know, let's see. Okay, I'm going with the yellow. Okay, so I'm setting these aside, keep them! But we just have enough to mount these. So I'm going to pick these three, and I need to mount them. So I'm going to make tape loops. If you happen to have double stick tape, you could also use that on your own but I'm going to make four tape loops. A tape loop is like a ring of tape with a sticky side out, and I place it in the corner of each one. My fingers are still dirty, but you know, this tape's never gonna show. It just needs to be sticky to hold this on. So I've got one done, and actually, let's see, where did my paper towel go? If you have some wet spots on your table, you know, wipe those off and then you'll have a cleaner workspace. Now I'm taking the yellow one, I'm lining it up, and mount it. So we've got one mounted, this one's pretty much done. Now we need two more with the tape loops. Let's see how quick I can do this. Now remember, pause at any time. If you need more time to make your tape loops, then take your time, just pause it, I'll go fast so the people that are going fast can see what to do. Four on that one. Ooh, this one doesn't want to roll up so good. Okay, now this one, I've got a few more. And last tape loop. Okay, now I'm going to stick my prints I selected, line them up. Got that one and this one. And now, and now it's time to wrap them in cellophane. Now let me show you how that's done. You've got these cellophanes here. I'm gonna take my first one, turn it upside down, set it on the cellophane. Make sure I have space all the way around it, and I need a few pieces of tape. So I take the first piece, and I fold it over, and I tape it. Make sure you only have one piece. And then these are really short on the extra space, because they don't come in the size we need, so we try to cut them for you guys. Okay, then you're gonna do the ends, and the corners need to not tuck it or hang out. 
So you can just fold the cor corner in and put the tape right there by the corner if you want. Now if you're only like five or six, see if you can get your parents to help you wrap this with cellophane. Or you can let them dry longer and just make sure that you wrap everything right before your big art show if you're doing it at the end of the week. Okay, now we've got the first one wrapped and ready for uh, display. Now we're gonna do the second one. Let me make sure this one's lined up right. Okay, flip it over. And then you can start wrapping it. Now this clear tape, if you end up going past the edge and over the front, it's the same look as the cellophane, so you probably wouldn't even see if it wrapped around slightly. And we've got our second one, and now the last of our prints before we wrap the plate. Okay, we've got one more to go. Here's our last one that we're wrapping, which is the plate, the three-dimensional one. So set that right there in the center. Gonna wrap this one up. Alrighty, now we have all four wrapped. Now, you can hang these up individually in your art show or you can wrap it where you hinge them together and you have three and your plate separate or I'll show you one more option. One more option is you can put them all in a design like this and put all four together and make one repetitive artwork like this. And how you would do that would be you would flip all of them over and you touch them together where they all line up with each other and then you tape them together like this. Okay, and then let me show you what that looks like. When you put all of them together, it looks like one big piece of artwork that repeats. So you can hang it like this, you can hang it like this, or display it like this. This is a triptych, this is a single, I don't know what you call it when it's four. I don't know, I'll have to look that one up. But you can hang this, it could be your biggest piece in the art show. It's like you get four pieces of artwork in one project. So. Um, you make that decision, that will really make yours unique. And once you decide, I would love it if you take a picture and show me how it turned out. And then post it, how you can post it so I can see it and, uh, you know, and send you a reply and tell you how much I love it, would be to uh, take your picture, post it on Instagram and tag it with art classes for kids. Or you can directly email it to me at kim at artclassesforkids.com. I hope you enjoyed this printmaking project and I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about Picasso. If you want to learn more about Picasso, Google up Picasso or Cubist artists and you can see more images and learn more. Until I see you next, hopefully on the next project, keep making cool art.